for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing up the man. She's always got a passing test video for you guys today. I recently went over some of my most viewed videos, and I couldn't help but notice that one of my most viewed is the last passing test video that I put out. So obviously there's a need for it. So I'm going to make a brand new video. I'm going to give you guys 10 cheats, tips, and tricks for being a better passer in Madden 22. As always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Now, the first thing to go over, and probably the most important thing, is protection calls. If you don't have adequate pass protection, it can affect your passing game in a multitude of ways, whether it's getting sacked, affecting the timing of throws, or just pressure from a defender causing accuracy issues. Some of the better ways to do that, and some of the more common ways to do that, are by pass blocking your running back. This is probably the most effective. A lot of times you can pass block your tight ends, but ultimately tight ends are not as good at pass blockers. They don't pick up blitzes as well as running backs do. Running backs are not perfect by any means, but if you want to put your running back on a pass block, all you have to do is select them and then typically uh, hot route them to a pass block, which you can see right here is the right trigger or the R2 button on PlayStation. Simple play action like Tom Brady's in, a lot of times can get you in trouble because they don't really get in position right away to make a block. Nope. It won't be as effective as if you put them on a pass block right out the gate. Now they're not gonna come forward, they're not gonna do the play action, they're not gonna do any of those things. It's the exact same play, but ultimately they're just gonna look to block right away and it'll be much more effective if you forget to do this pre-snap, you can always do a post-snap as well by hitting the right trigger once the play starts. This will essentially shorten any play action and basically put your running back right on a pass block pattern. It's still most effective to do a pre-snap, but if you see a blitz after the play starts, you can always just hit the right trigger, cancel the play action, and it'll still give you the best opportunity to pick up any oncoming blitzers. Now, sometimes simply blocking the running back isn't enough. If you find yourself facing an elite pass rusher like an Aaron Donald or a Khalil Mack or a J.J. Watts, sometimes you have to take it a step further and initiate a double team. Now, to do this, you simply have to bring up your protection once again by hitting the LB button or the L1 button if you're on PlayStation. Then hit down on the right stick, and that'll bring up your double team menu option where essentially you just have to pick which defender you want to double team. Doing this will essentially have two offensive linemen dedicated to that specific player anytime you do that and it's always going to give you a better opportunity to pass block that particular player. So now that we have our protection figured out, we'll have a clean pocket, we still need to worry about setting our feet before we throw. It'll do you no good at all to have a clean pocket if you're throwing wildly on the run like this. Yeah. A lot of times throwing balls like this will get the ball intercepted or at the very least put the ball in danger. So whenever you're throwing a deep pass or whenever you intend to throw any pass past 10 or 15 yards, make sure that you want to set your feet. Make sure you want to let your quarterback get both his feet playing on the ground. The easiest way to do this is by letting go of the direction stick for a second just to basically let the computer stand on its own, then throw the ball. This will give you better accuracy. It will also give you better arm strength from every quarterback. Now, this isn't always the most important thing when it comes to short passing, as you can basically get away with that, but anything over 10, 15, 20 yards, uh, the deeper the pass, the more important it is to make sure that you're setting your feet before you throw. Not every quarterback in this game has an elite arm, so it's important to make sure that when you're throwing not to drop back too far and to step up in the pocket. If you don't have an elite arm and you drop back too far, a lot of times you won't have enough arm strength to complete a pass even if the receiver is open. So my next tip is to always try to find a way to shorten the throw, whether that means stepping up in the pocket and getting closer to the line of scrimmage behind your actual protection, or whether it means running around your pocket so that you can get closer to the receiver in the direction that they're traveling. Either way, shortening the throw is very important when you don't have an elite arm strength quarterback. It's something you're going to have to do with about 90% of the quarterbacks in this game. Now another tip that I'm not going to spend too much time going over in this particular video is the importance of reading a defense. You always want to try to read a defense pre-snap on every single play. Now I won't spend a lot of time on that because I actually dedicated an entire video on how to read a defense. So if you guys want to check that out, I will have a link in the description below. It's very important to try to figure out what the strengths and weaknesses are of a defense you're facing on every single play. 
Now, obviously, taking a sack is better than throwing a bad pass and throwing an interception, but there's other ways to handle this. Number one, if you want to throw the ball away at any point in time, all you have to do is push in the right stick, and you will throw the ball safely out of bounds. Nope. You always have the option to safely throw the ball out of bounds. The only time that, that won't work, though, is if you're in the end zone. <laughs> you have to be outside the tackle box, or you will get a penalty, and you will essentially give up a safety for intentional grounding. Next up, we'll go over how you can augment passes and catches. This is probably the most important tip when it comes to completing passes against man or zone you have to pretty much augment the pass on every single down to be successful there's times where receivers will or won't be open based whether or not you augmented the pass properly now the easiest one to do is probably a bullet pass this is probably one that people do the most you're going to want to do this at any point in time you basically want to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands as fast as possible a lot of times it's just an easy throw to the flat there's no real reason to have the ball in the air any longer than it has to be you just basically want to get to your receiver so you can catch and run as quick as possible this is also something that if you're throwing in between zones a lot of time you're going to have to basically bullet it in there so that you can get the ball at a safe place or you know basically before a receiver gets to the sideline like here Lobbing a pass typically has its place when you're trying to beat man coverage deep. Anytime that you have man coverage or zone coverage and there's nothing over the top, you're going to want to lob a pass. Lots of times when you try to bullet pass against man coverage, it typically ends in an interception, as you can see right here, where if I would have lobbed that pass, I would have had an opportunity to basically catch and run and try to out sprint the defensive player in coverage. So to bullet pass, you're going to want to hold the receiving icon down. To lob pass, you're just going to want to tap it one time briefly and then you'll see that you have a ball thrown in the air and it gives you a much better opportunity to try to switch onto the receiver run under it and catch it now on this particular play i'm also pass leading which i think is something that you should do on just about every single play this play wouldn't even be open if it wasn't for the pass lead and the lob pass the pass lead i'm basically leading away from the cover two safety to the sideline which is something that you have to do on pretty much any given play if you don't pass lead to the sideline you'll see how essentially this ball just gets lifted right into the position where the safety you can essentially make a play on the ball. So this play in particular wouldn't work unless I was doing both lob passing and pass leading to the sideline. So it just goes to show how important these functions are when it comes to making a big play, as otherwise this play would be covered and would never be complete. Now another important thing to do is a low throw, which essentially is something that you can augment the trajectory of the ball, whether it's going to be a high pass or a low pass. Typically, if I were to just throw this ball here like a normal pass, number one, it's going to get defended. It's either going to get knocked out or my receiver is going to get killed. And number two, a lot of times the ball will go flying in the air and get intercepted. So that's why it's super important to hold the left trigger and throw this ball into the ground so that your receiver can safely catch it. Now, another step that I'm doing on this exact same play pretty much every time was safe catching. Safe catching is something that can pretty much guarantee a reception uh, as it basically ends the play the second you do it. To trigger a safe catch animation, all you really have to do is catch the ball by hitting A uh, the second that the, the ball hits the receiver. By doing this, you both protect the ball and the receiver from injury or from potential fumbles or potential uh, you know, pop-up animations where the ball goes flying in the air. So to me, a safe catch is probably my most used uh, catching animation, although you can also aggressive catch and rack catching is pretty popular as well. As you can see right there, a catch and run animation is also going to help you gain more yards. So at any point in time, if you feel like you're throwing into a tight space, safe catch. If you feel like you're throwing to space you can catch and run, hit that uh, X or square button on PlayStation and you can get more yards after the catch. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. If you guys want to see more passing tips videos or more tips videos in general, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.